I'm gonna come Five, myself in four. two weeks in a row. Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I'm Jeff Burlingame, joined with my co-host Paul Glass. Cheers, dude. <laughs> Cheers, dude. And we are talking about episode two of our all-time favorite baits. This episode, we're going like the opposite. The opposite of mm-hmm. Top Water. Top Water was our last episode. If you guys haven't listened to it, go back and listen. Uh, and also maybe subscribe. Maybe drop a five star review. Maybe drop a comment. And let us know things that we could talk about next and ways that we could improve the show. We appreciate all the feedback we get. You guys are fantastic. But today we're going the opposite of Top Water. We're going to talk finesse. What do you do when fishing gets hard? What do you do if you got ultra clear water? What do you do if the fish just ain't going to bite? You make them bite. You tempt them, you tease them, you finesse them. So we're going to be talking about all of that today. Before we get into that, real quick, if you guys are looking for more content from Burley Fishing, be sure to check us out on YouTube, Burley Fishing. That's where it all started. Check out our Instagram handles as well, at Burley Fishing. We got at Paul underscore J underscore Glass. I think I nailed it that time. Thank you very much. Uh, And we're also on Facebook, Burley Fishing. And uh, I mean... Why not check out TikTok? I don't know if that's going to be a thing next week, whatever, you know, it might, it might disappear, but we're growing there. We got like 850 some followers at this point. I don't know. 12 year olds got like 10 times subscribers, more than, more subscribers than I have. So whatever. Uh, but yeah, go check it out. I dropped some videos there every single day. Just having fun and fishing, man. Uh, without further ado, Paul, let's get after this thing. So this is something we talked about on episode like maybe one or two, maybe it was three or four, five, six, early, early on, might have been seven, (laughs) ten, twelve, thirteen, maybe fifteen. Can't name every episode. It was earlier than this one. (laughs) We talked about (laughs) so the idea behind, okay, baitcaster, the real. Reels reels typically have the uh, the handles for retrieve on the right hand side. Mm-hmm. Most people who are, and this this is to accommodate people who are right-handed, allegedly. Um, and we talked about I do not use, I have, I have, I have never even owned a baitcaster that has this, this the reel on the right side. All of mine have, I have left-handed models. Same. Every single one I've ever had. And I watch videos of people that cast, and you know all the Switch pros hands. are out there. They cast with their right hand. Then they actually switch hands after the bait hits the water mm-hmm. and start reeling with their right hand. I'm like, I had, I felt like maybe I'm stupid. Like <laughs> maybe I'm just really, really dumb. And I'm like, wow, maybe everyone Probably. out there. Yeah, I'm like, this for sure has to be it. Like way back before when I was like spinning only. And I, I'm like, man, why, why does this exist? Like why, why do people do this? I did some more research on it because I was like watching like, I yeah. FLW or something, and I'm like, dude, everyone is doing this. Like, why? So I get back this? online. So originally, like way back when, like bait casters didn't have all the amazing technology that they have today, they like were essentially they're essentially just a hold line. Like that's yeah. all that they were really there to do, and 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 people weren't really using a lot of the work intensive baits that they're using today that required you to like have your right hand your 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 like your your main hand like working baits and so all you really needed to do was retrieve and if yeah. all you are really doing is retrieving dominant hand dominant yeah. hand don't doing the retrieving also anyone trolling you want your right hand cranking because that's your dominant right. hand and you're cranking that mfr in so like yeah right hand it totally makes sense Fast forward to 2020, there are <laughs> way more companies making left-handed models out there. You can go into like a Heck yeah. national sporting chain, you know, Academy or Dick's or wherever you do your purchasing, and you can find left-handed everywhere. And I think that a lot of pros out there, if they could go back in time and just like had a left-handed model and a right-handed model to pick from, I think yeah. most of them would want to have, you'd mind me working the stick with your right hand and re- re- retrieving with your left, even though... I understand that a bait caster is really more of a winch Man, with the retrieve speeds that they're, that are out there. Like you're doing plenty fine yeah. with your non-dominant hand, especially if that's how you learn how to do it. The other big thing is on your, on your, I should happen to have one right here. Cause I was just getting ready for later. You, you know, 
when you cast with your right and you retrieve with your left, I'm casting with my right hand, bait hits the water, there's no split second of me no with switch. bait on the water switching where a fish can yeah. hit and I'm going to miss that fish. It does not exist. I cast, boom, I'm on it and I'm ready to rock. Like before it hits the water even. And yeah. so it just honestly if you're <clears throat> if you're out there and you're looking at and if you're looking at left-handed models and like, but I'm right-handed especially if you're a blank slate get yourself a left-handed model that means real on the left-hand side you will not be mad and screw everyone else that's learning to do it the dumb <laughs> way because that's just like how they always learned how to do it it's not a good way to do it it's Except okay. our listeners, because they're not dumb, they're awesome. <laughs> Made a mistake. Someone taught you wrong. I can't help you. I, you know, it's just it doesn't make a You're lot of sense. You're creating a divide right now. I, just, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Split yeah, the family. I, I, I'm just stirring the pot. I just, <laughs> I do. You know, people get used to it. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's fine. It's very rare that you're going to lose a blow up or anything. My point is, if you have the option and you you know, you weren't watching someone else do it or you didn't have someone teaching you to do it a different way. If you could just blank slate, look at the op the, the options like right now with the technology that's out there, I think most people would pick a left-handed retrieve model. I think it only, I think it only really helps you these days. There's not many instances where you would like really need to have a right-handed retrieve. I'm talking mostly about bass fishing, I'm not talking about offshore, like trolling type stuff. And if you're left-handed, it's just a double bonus. Maybe you're switching. Maybe you're buying a right-handed model. I don't know. But so I are you stirring up a, a debate? Is this a question of the day? What's it's more point? like a clarification <laughs> because like we had this question on yeah. the show initially, and I had I re, I legitimately like I didn't do like a ton of research on it at any point, but it was like really nagging at me. No, I remember um, you were like, honestly, anybody out there, can you please? We didn't have any listeners at the time. Let me yeah, we that. had one listener. It must have, it must have been <laughs> super early, and it was like just you know, us listening I'll to ourselves. Either. But yeah, I remember you asking this and let's ask it again. <laughs> so that's, that is the question. We're question to you question guys. the episode is, do you, is there, is there something else that I don't know about Are we other than the historical piece of it, which kind of makes sense to me. Like I was reading this in like a, I had to dig. I mean, I went back into like a couple of like of those weird, yeah. like, you know, bass forums where there's just a bunch of old men drinking coffee and arguing with each other. But it's like, I, you had to go back to figure it out. I mean, it doesn't, yeah, yeah I, it was not, it is not like very apparent. It is, however, apparent that like more left handed models are like becoming available. There are like way more. It's not like a, or it's not a limited wrong? option. Or are we wrong? And this is just like a stick shift versus automatic situation. That's very possible. Like there might be something that's just the left aware. hand is just the automatic line coming out, or like, oh, it's easy now. Every, anybody can do it. Well, I, I mean, yeah, that's the idea. So, and, I mean, I'm fine with these. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally fine with having an automatic. I, in terms of baitcaster, but I, um, yeah, if anybody knows any more, love to hear about it. It's just something that was like has I'll really been like really just nagging me. Um, and so I did a Paul little research sleep. on it. Paul doesn't yeah. sleep because of this issue. Not a lot. He I sleep slept a little more groups. now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would. Uh, if anyone knows more about it, let me know. Or let us know. And I uh, and, and if anyone's out there saying you should only cast uh, with your right hand and retrieve with your right hand, uh, state your case. Prove Tell me wrong. Me why. Prove Tell me wrong. Me why. Yeah, it's just if, if if left hand retrieve is wrong, I don't want to be right. I agree. And that's <laughs> literally, why I'm literally not. right. Yeah, I'm literally <laughs> and I'm literally not. I, I think yeah. I am. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I've owned or ever have owned or ever will own one that is a a right hand a right handed model. I won't. Yeah, it's um, kind of like it feels like uh, goofy foot versus regular foot for like snowboarding and skateboarding and surfing sure. and stuff. I don't know. Except I, you're not like more likely to fall when you get on a chairlift with like <laughs> going goofy or not like because you went dumb. Yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just That's seems like yeah, why would you why would you add that in there? Like you're just making it harder for no reason. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. I the other thing too is it fits with a lot of like spin casting models. So like you're not switching back and forth, like if you have a right-handed retrieve bait caster and you switch over, like I guess 
with pretty much all models now you can switch the reels back and forth but like why would you do that with a spin cast that makes no sense so like, i think most right-handed people retrieve with their left on a spin caster yeah um no one who's i don't i not many people are casting with their right stopping the bait flipping the bail then switching hand that just seems weird so yeah i think most spinning reels are preset on the left and you switch yeah. it to the right yeah if you want yeah. if you need that if you're left-handed exactly yeah. interesting all right, food for thought. That's what I have. That's my episode. That's my episode question. That's my it's question a, to you. It's a new piece. It's a food for thought. <laughs> food for, I We're don't have time. I don't have time. Making to a more, more robust episodes by the episode. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, new segment. Um, yeah. <laughs> Million dollar idea. That's the next segment. Um, oh, that's every. That's somewhere yeah. in the episode. It's always a hidden gem. What is Paul's million dollar idea? It's gonna. It's episode. gonna be there. <laughs> um, all right. So the the weekly check in. I'll go because mine's pretty easy. I've been on vacation all week, and by vacation, we my, my wife now, my wife and I are calling it. We were calling it a trip because there's no yeah. such thing as a vacation when you have a one year old. Like you're not, Max. you're just doing the same exact same thing that you did at but home. Swear, you're just in a different spot, <laughs> with like a different kind of roof over your head or whatever. Um, Max. But it, it was a lot of fun. We didn't. No, there goes more. We didn't. We didn't get to do a lot of fishing. Um, I've been by a lot of men, like none, zero. Um, caught at least I, one I saw, right? No. No, mm -mm, no what no. was that? That, that was, was old That release? was from the weekend, yeah. Oh, slow baker. release, slow burn. <laughs> the um, No fishing whatsoever. But uh, I did, though. My son, who's almost one and a half, got him on the Hobie for like 10, 15 minutes, tops. Took him out on the water. Dude was a champ. The, the biggest, the biggest concern was like putting on the life jacket and then once he was cool with that it was golden it was awesome i would like i've always wanted to have like something where my kid was like my dad had me on the you know on the water when i was one you know or like had me yeah. in the deer stand when i was like six weeks old or whatever Start like, him young. yeah you know that whole thing yeah. like i don't have anything to be able to say like that and it would be right. really i think it should be pretty sweet to be like you know I, my, my dad had me when i when i before i could even breathe and like <laughs> That'd be, <laughs> that would be. I think that's pretty. Uh, smart, so we're trying to oh we're, we're pushing the envelope on that one. Very safe. Wife was in the separate kayak next to us and everything, but that was pretty awesome. So that was my that was that's the big one for the week. Rad man. Uh, I don't even know what day it is. Honestly, I've just been on calls all week. I'm a little brain dead. Um, I think we hadn't spoken after I had opened that new box. Right. So I, if you guys watch the YouTube channel, I cracked open a, a new, a new box. Cause I think, I think what I want to do a new brand of box, a new, new brand, brand of box. Yeah. 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 So I do, I'm not switching brands. Don't worry. Still monster bass for life, but I tried a new box because I think what I want to do with the channel is try all these different boxes out there. And if you guys know, if you don't know, I'll tell you now, if you guys know, you know, there's about 50 of them. There are so many subscription boxes, it's insane. I'm not gonna keep them all all the time because I ain't got a million dollars, but I am gonna try them all for at least a month or two or three, and then I'll cancel it if it sucks for three months in a row if it sucks, like there's just no way. But I feel like it's my, my, my duty, my job, to basically test these boxes, tell you guys if I think it's worth the money or not, et cetera, and just you know try to catch some freaking fish on it because I think, there are a lot of great boxes out there. I want to check them out. I know you guys are asking about them or you have them and you say, mine's better than this one. So I just want to do the comparison. So anyways, we checked out Warrior Tackle Supply. And let's just say if first impressions were the most important thing ever, it didn't go well. Uh, the box was not great. I was not happy with it. We'll just, we'll just put it there. Go watch the video if you want to see what was in the box to see why I wasn't happy with it. But I think... The issue with this box was that it leads as a bass box, like Monster Bass, like Mystery Tackle Box, but it's 100,000% a multi-species box. And I was not prepared for that, let's say. <laughs> and now that I know that, I can like kind of reset my expectations, but it's not advertised that way. Let's just put it that way, at least as far as I saw. Um, I think the company is up for a good cause. They're trying to donate, uh, back, give back to veterans, and I think that's great. Um, I think that they need to do better with the product because it wasn't great. But at any rate, I took the product out on the water, my favorite body of water. And if you guys know, you know where that is. So I took the family camp in. We went out on this lake. I had a good time. Uh, fish a lot of top water. I got a lot more spider bites, like one of them. 
is on my Instagram stories and also uh, on my TikTok. But I reeled a guy through a whole bunch of salad. And let's just say he came back with a whole bunch of grass on his face. And it was hilarious and a lot of fun. Uh, had some like real big bass there, a couple of like 18 and a half, 19 inches, like just gosh dang good time. And if you guys have been listening to Paul and I, you know, we ain't been catching pike lately. And your boy caught more pike in one day in several hours than I had caught the whole year. And that is the only credit I'm going to give to this box because it was on the baits from this box. But that's where I was like, this is a bass box. What the hell? And also that lake I fished, not a pike lake. I never catch pike on there. And I fish it all the time. I've been there many, many times. uh, And I always catch bass. And I've caught one pike, I think, ever. And it was the smallest pike I've ever caught. Uh, So I was like, "Ah, you know, the bass just eat really well. And the pike, therefore, don't eat very well. I don't know. Uh, They're always pale and they look sickly when you get them, too. Uh, All the ones I caught this time were very pale, very sad pike. Um, But... You know, I, I fished the box. I completed a quote unquote slam. I'm going to start calling them a on the water review because I really want to make it about the baits more than got to get all these things knocked out because that just makes it for me not fun. Uh, so, but I did get them all. I knocked out all the baits, got a couple on trolling, but we had four, four out of the six baits caught pike. Four out of the six baits. And to give you guys an idea, like think bass for a second, this box had a bright fire tiger uh big swim bait one of those like big gigantic looks like lipless baits that is all erratic action bright fire tiger terrible paint job like horrible uh caught a pike on that it had a big fat like almost a wake bait kind of a square bill from weston least favorite weston bait i've ever gotten caught a pike on that it had all sorts of other things but like one other thing that really bothered me was it had a pink sinking jerk bait think about that for a second think about where you're gonna fish that i heard walleye i heard winter bait and i was like why did i get this in july for a bass box yeah it's not that it it's not that these things can't catch bass of like, course they can they, catch like fish yeah but if if you were gonna put it in like a bucket of like i'm going to go fish for bass or the i'm clear in spin. july or if I'm going to put this in the bucket of like, I'll maybe catch something in like the late fall yeah. for pike, it'd probably go in the late fall for pike bucket or right. like the trolling for pike bucket or yeah. walleye or something like a yeah. big old swim bait. Yeah, it'll catch it. Bass will be caught. It will also just hammer things like musky and pike. And so like those are, it's like, is it leaning one way or the other? It's probably not exactly leaning in like, like the monster bass box was like all top water. You got yeah. it in August. I, you know, it's a bass box. They're all bass yeah. baits. You know, I, I'm just, I'll put it this way. Some people say, I love that bait. I love that bait. You can't tell me you love all of these baits in this collection for something that you would assume would be a bass box. So I'm just a little confused and looking for clarification. But at the end of the day, the recap part of this is, I went camping. I went fishing several times. I caught a heck ton of fish. I did some night bite time and I had like a good morning, you know, big old like five hour morning shift. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I still had fun, even though I had to get this box done, you know what I mean? Which is why I want to shift this to a on the water review instead of a slam. Cause it's just, it, it, it takes the fun out of, out of fishing. It's just it's not like fun. A lot of, it's a lot of like personal pressure. Exactly. And I think that the pressure affects you when you're fishing, right? Like fishing is a lot of fishing is about confidence. If you can't sling the bait and say this next one, this next one, you get to that point where you're like, nothing's going to bite. Slapping water. You're just slapping water. You just throw it. And I think the thing that's hard too is like, I think a lot of people like, cause you know, like you were like, oh yeah, I saw you caught one fish. Like, because I posted something on Instagram that was like me catching a fish that was from Saturday prior. Like people assume, I think a lot of people who see accounts like the ones that we are working on like assume that because you have a lot of content that you're fishing all the time that you're fishing like five six days a week i'm i'm very fortunate to be able to fish like real hard yeah, essentially yeah. one day a week maybe yeah. two times a week if i'm super lucky yeah. and it, it, that's not that much but like you just pour a ton of time and 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 effort creating content in that trip and so like it is work and the from the second from the second you get up in the morning 
charge making sure all your batteries are charged making sure you got all of your all of your gear detail. organized the night before i got all my baits tied on so that when we get to the water we're on the water as soon as possible yep. so that we have time to film before the sun gets like all of that stuff it it it, it creates a lot of like I, you have to remember a ton of crap and it takes a <laughs> lot of time to remember like i can't just film like one video in a saturday i have to film like two to three mm-hmm. and and then you add on top of that the fact that when you feel like if I don't do this box justice by like catching all of the fish on it, like, am I like no longer credible? Like, mm-hmm. no, it was like 30 mile per hour winds. It was 20 <laughs> degrees colder than it should have been. And like, you're not going to hammer a top water back box that day. It's not going to happen. And it's like, that happens all the time to us. Yeah. It just, that's like the reality of fishing that like, I think everybody knows about. So, you know, giving all the bits of baits a fair shake and getting to the point where you're like, today's not the day for a pink, sinking jerk bait like you just give it give it its half hour 45 minutes that's a huge chunk of your day if you're out for five or six hours yeah and then you just say next and then you just roll yeah and and that's why i want to shift it to an on the water review because i think part of it is like it's not our fish attracted to it in this moment in this environment with this weather pattern like in this body of water at this retrieve speed (laughs) i want it to also be like Here's the bait. Here's the action it gives me in the water. I think it looks good. I think it looks bad. You know, here's how it holds up. Is it durable? If it's like a plastic, for example, like how durable is it? How many, how does it handle just going through the weeds or like, how does it handle being fished? It's supposed to. The workouts intended to work. Yeah. Yep. Like, how is it supposed to be fished? I fished it that way. Didn't work. Case in point, I got a square bill in an MTB, well, two MTB things real quick. Uh, The square bill from the MTB that swam sideways. Yeah, it was uh, the Noken Vexan something brand. It swam sideways. It did not do what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Yes, I caught fish on it because it's just swinging hooks through the water. And if there's fish there, you might get them. But like it didn't do what it was supposed to do. It made me mad. And then there's that chirping lipless bait. And I'll just say, yeah, uh, well, and we've, <laughs> and we've hit stuff like that with Monster Bass, too. I mean, there's been times where you're like. Is that, Why? Was this this should have been in the August box? So this should have been in the yeah, whatever, yeah. like a different. Like it's not. It's it's part of it too. Is every we talked about this before? Confidence baits, and this is kind of what we're getting into. Is like that's what this whole episode. We're about is. to talk about some confidence baits. We're about course. to talk about confidence baits and like what makes a confidence bait. Confidence baits. One's it's a it's a piece of it's a bait that you have used and had success with. In many situations, and you feel like it's going to work when you throw it. You have confidence that it will work, and therefore it does most of the time. Exactly, it's like <laughs> self fulfilling prophecy. That's just like yep. sort of a little like thing about fishing. That I think a lot of people like don't understand. Like, yeah. and, and like a, I, I already know I have the bait in mind from Monster Vest. We were talking about like it's that gigantic booyah with like the huge, the huge, sail. huge sail buzz bait. Got that I mean, April. It's not that it doesn't work. I've right. seen videos. Of, yeah, I've seen videos of dudes absolutely hammering with that thing. Uh, I probably will never catch fish on it. I'm bringing it tomorrow, guys. We're gonna yeah. if, if the top and water bites on, I have it. But it is I, the I, loudest, biggest buzz bait you've ever seen. I forget what it's called, but it's like it's it's the booyah, so, and I think it's the it's I forget what series it is. Something about being very loud and annoying. It's wild. It's wild. And there's nothing wrong. Like, there's nothing wrong the with it. Like, the blade's the size of my hand. It's huge. It's huge. And it's like, I threw it. It did what it was supposed to do. Like, if I was going to review yep. that bait, I'd be like, this is doing, this is as advertised. You know what? At night, that thing probably, or at morning, at early a.m., that thing might absolutely crush. We're going to try it. We're gonna I see. mean, that thing might absolutely hammer. Because it is chartreuse. If it was black, I'd say night. That thing would be a sick color. Yeah. If it was black though, that thing might absolutely destroy. And I got a I, black one from them too. It's like black and red, red oh, hooks. That sounds deadly. And yep. it's just like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that bait, but like I get that in the box. I'm like, yeah, probably wouldn't have been my choice. So some of this is definitely personal preference. Some of this is definitely where, you know, where are you from, which is why the regional box is going to probably hit Helps. the mark more often yeah. than not. Yeah. Cause that Midwest box has stuff where I've seen like, a lot more like popping frogs go other places where like, ah, I'd rather have the ones that I got um, yeah. just as an example. And so it's like, it, it, it's a, it's a real thing that will help hit the mark a little better. So there's always that piece of it. And it does it. It just, when you have that added pressure of like, dude, if I don't slam this box, like is my, like, am I like ruining my credibility? And like, yeah. 
what you want your credibility to be is like, I can give you a good grade on this box, on these baits, based on my experience. I took them out. I fished every single one of them. I gave them all their due. I put them in the best chance to catch fish. Maybe I caught fish on everyone. Maybe I didn't. But like, I want to give each one a fair shake. And I don't want to ruin my entire day and make this harder than it already is. I think Facts. that's the biggest, right? That's the biggest thing. Facts. Awesome. I appreciate that. I think, sure. I think. Well, because I've done it. I mean, like, yeah. I'll sit there and slap water and be like, I freaking hate this piece of garbage, but I have to knock it out. They're like, yeah. I'd rather just throw that swim bait again that was smacking them. Exactly. <laughs> that's and the that's hardest your... part. That is the hardest part is when you're like. One of them from them the box. In, like the bandit. Remember that bandit? Yes. I was tagging fish left and right with this this bandit lure. You and quit it was the like, challenge right there. You were going like... to challenge. I was like. <laughs> I'm not getting off this thing. It's smashing. <laughs> and Jeff was like, and just like, get off well, the bait. You caught the fish. Is one. Get off the bait. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to like catch one. I'm like, I'm my fifth one. I'm like, the band is a beast. I'm like, Paul only I, caught one. <laughs> I didn't want to get off it. It was smacking them. And then I did. And yeah. I caught like one more fish the rest of the day. Dude, that sucks. Dude, you, you make yourself get off the hot bite. Like, dude, good yeah. luck. Have fun doing that. The, the six cent slam I did that I posted last week uh, on the channel, that black magic square bill, which yeah. I knew, I knew it was going to be good. I <laughs> yeah. knew it. it and it good to me. I want to eat it. Dude, I caught five, like 16 plus inches off of one rock. <laughs> it's like, bam, bam, bam. And I was like, I can't put any of these in the video because I only get one catch. <laughs> it's tough. So that, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, that's true, man. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We're here finesse. to talk about finesse baits. So we, we did top water. Though again, this is a series of, of shows. I set up kind of thinking about how I want to organize this. We got some uh, uh, some great feedback from from some listener and, and it basically said, like, what are your favorite baits? You fished a bunch of baits. This is kind of like your thing. Like, what are your favorites? And so I didn't want to just do like, what are your top five favorite baits? I just thought that was sort of like wasting what is kind of a cool discussion and an opportunity people for people to talk about what their favorite versions of things are yeah. as well as what ours are so um and then maybe hear about some things that maybe you've never heard about before that are kind of in the same vein as what we're what we know maybe what you fish right now you just haven't heard of so um started with top water uh this week it's finesse we're going to work our way kind of through the gamut of things that you might hear about we're not going to cover every single bait so don't think that this is like an we're not going to hit every single one we're going to hit a huge i'm, I'm aiming for like 85 90 percent of what's out there um, again, this is mostly bass related. I do want to do a trolling one that was not in my initial write up, mm -hmm. but I do want to do one on trolling and it'll be more like around like the walleye musky, you know, maybe I'll do one of each. I haven't figured that out yet. We have time to figure it out, but so far it's been, uh, mostly again, mostly targeted towards bass. Cause that's kind of the niche that we're in right now. And that applies to the most people. Um, mm -hmm. if there's something you'd like to hear about, I would love to talk about some different things. We should do a live bait one. That's one that I haven't written that I would like to write is maybe one on live bait. Cause that's sort of yeah. my, that's how I learned how to fish. So that's a, I would really like to cover that one too. So yeah. if you're interested in hearing about something, let us know. We can add it to the series. We've got plenty of time. There's going to be a lot of episodes coming out targeting our favorite bait. So we call I'm calling fresh, it AT. Fresh water. Fresh water. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people salt do. water. I don't know anything about that. It's not a my jam. A lot of people ask me from time to time about like saltwater fishing. Just so you guys know, Michigan, Great Lakes, all fresh. All fresh. Oddly water. enough. O oddly, yeah. unsalted, no sharks. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't know anything about saltwater fishing, so don't ask us. <laughs> I, I would love tell to you the name of a, I could tell you the name of a guide service. Um, so, <laughs> so the, I'll use uh, Google. <laughs> I'll yeah, exactly. One. I'll just snapshot the screenshot there you go have a good one sure. um, yeah and i have freshwater mostly again bass fishing mostly uh, but yeah if there's something else you want to hear about i feel like dude do a walleye episode i would love to talk about jigs sure. talk about trolling i'm all about that if you want to talk about perch Trout, or, flies screw it, i'm gonna do a bunch i already know i've got like six more ideas i just talked about but there's something you want to hear about let us know i would love to cover it um uh but yeah so we're covering probably 85 90 percent today we are going to be talking finesse i did this mostly for jeff thanks guys <laughs> <laughs> um I, does everybody you know, love finesse can, I, yeah, can everybody just give me a give me a big old woo i love no, finesse. I'll, i'm gonna give you a woo it it's kind of i love finesse yeah it's it's awkward because jeff has like a a weird combination of like it's like power fishing 
style, <laughs> but like finesse. only with finesse baits. It's <laughs> like aggressively <if> subtle. <laughs> <laughs> aggressively subtle. That's there's a t-shirt. It's like it's little, <laughs> that's the t-shirt. That's a little t-shirt for it. It's aggressively subtle. It is and, so aggressively subtle how I fish that net rig. <laughs> it's so like Jeff will get down and he'll be like, "Well, I didn't hit a net rig on two casts. I'm immediately changing baits." And then Quick. like the drop shot didn't work, immediately change baits. And like it's not a bad way to fish, it's just it's really funny, but um that's why this is for Jeff. So we're going to we're going to hit we're going to first of all, Jeff defines for me and the listeners in general again this is not going to hit everything perfectly we are kind of we're hitting the highlights uh and then getting in depth on some of the different rigs but just in general what makes a been what 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 makes the bucket of finesse baits what makes you put something in that bucket so for finesse if, if we're generalizing finesse you're generally talking about like uh for me something that's lighter weight quieter not extremely flashy so just think like the opposite of the buzz bait (laughs) you basically got finesse not flashy not loud it's It's probably slow it's subtle it can be aggressively subtle we can find a way to make it aggressively subtle we'll talk about how (laughs) but yeah it's it's subtle like it's not you're not just punching that bass in the face going like look at me it's more like check this out and then the bass goes, what the hell, bro? And, and that then was, just eats it. That was the other thing I was say. It's typically a little bit of a slower presentation. Yeah. Like you are. If you, you have think, weight, like it's not a slow fall only. Slow fall is part of that, but it could also just sit there like a drop shot. Exa- yeah. There's 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 typically an element of slowness to it or stillness. Yeah. And and the reason I say subtle is because in that moment, in those moments of stillness, the baits are usually are typically downsized. So you don't get these like your Texas rig for some of these because you can't Texas rig does have a finesse opportunity within it. Um, typically, when you think of Texas rig, I think of like, you know, big worms. I think of yeah. like, you know, big creature baits and, and things of that nature. And they're moving water, they're churning up dust and you know that's kind of their deal. Uh, or, or you're ripping them through big weeds or whatever, what have you. But they're typically larger. This is going to be a smaller, thinner profile that a lot of the work is going to be done by the current. Like whatever current is under in the water, and even if there feels like there's no current, this bait is just alive. Um, that's sort of the subtle piece of it. So there's there's a slowness piece to it typically, and then there's the subtlety where, um, like, I don't know if you've ever seen a trick worm. That to me is like the ultimate finesse bait. You took like a regular senko, you made it real thin, you gave it some subtle variations in the body where the tail, like right before the end, trims way down and then maybe gets bulbousy at the end, and it's just got this wicked action. And the action on these is going to be way more, like if you took a finesse bait and you were holding it in your hands and you just shook your hand, it's going to be ten, it's going to have 10 times as much action in general, generalizing, yeah. than something that's like a Senko or, or like a, a bigger, heavier like creature bait. It's just going to... It, it, you're trying to take advantage of that subtle presentation. So it's just, yep. that's the biggest difference to me. It's a little bit slower, typically um, very targeted more often than not, you're going to be like targeting in specific area, less so covering like a ton of water. Like they, to yeah. me, the difference is between so- smaller sized, thinner, soft plastic versus crankbait. To me, that's like, yeah. the, that's the difference. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you're you're definitely you're rolling up on a spot like this is how I fish in the Ned rig, for example, is like I'll roll up on a spot where I'm like, there's fish there, and then I'm just gonna cast right into it, and they're gonna either eat it or not, and I'll move to the next spot. Or if I'm on the river, it's like the Ned rig. If you guys watched the river trip on Paul's birthday, it was like cast out, let it just tumble over rocks in the current, mm-hmm. and Smallies just hated it. And they would just eat that thing up. So, but I was like, I didn't do anything. The bait did everything. It was like the easiest day of fishing I ever had. And I felt really bad about it. Paul was just, <laughs> Paul's working the fly, like way more work. I could work. not get the fly. And I'm just like, Zing! that was too much finesse. Um, <laughs> that was tough, man. That yeah. was a good day, but that was tough. So, all right. So that's kind of like the definition of a finesse bait. Um, to me, but my next kind of hit topic is like what makes a great finesse bait. To me, the best finesse baits are ones that take full advantage of of the action that they're trying to impart. So, for yeah. example, um, 
what makes a great finesse bait is one that let that is like allowing you to target a specific area in like the best way possible. And to me, that's why whenever I think of finesse, my brain automatically goes to drop shot because I think, oh, there's two foot of weeds. Well, I can just take my, so for those who don't know what a drop shot is, you essentially have a weight at the end of your line, and then somewhere above the line, um, you have tied on uh, horizontally a, a soft plastic, a hook with a soft plastic. There's a lot of different ways to rig it, but it's essentially, that's what it is. Now, that whole, how you can choose how far high or low the bait is away from the, the weight is what is kind of like the magic of it. So if I'm seeing three foot of weeds or one foot of weed, and I'm like, man, I'd sure like to be exactly two inches above that. <laughs> I like to be like right there or like a foot above it or whatever it happens to be. You just tie the hook on a little bit higher or a little bit lower. And it's, you know, exact once your line is taught, you know exactly how high that or how far off the bottom that bait is. And um, man, you can just literally let that thing sit in one spot forever. So if you know where the fish are at. This is letting you like get into like within a couple of inches, essentially, of wherever you think the fish are. And like that's what makes a great finesse bait. So like targeting a depth, targeting a zone, letting a bait, like if you think about the weightless Texas, like you want to be in the strike zone for an eternity. <laughs> so what's gonna long. what's gonna be in the strike zone for longer than a weightless Texas rig? Not much. Yeah. And if you guys much, well, a weightless wacky. Yeah, that's <laughs> if, sure. If, if you wacky, guys haven't yeah. if you guys haven't thrown those, especially in summer, do it. Just do it. Just don't even listen to the rest of the episode yet. Go do that and then come back and listen to the rest of the episode. Yeah, you, but like I, you guys will get what we're talking about. It's Super just, it, slow. Yeah. And and so it that's what I think makes it a great finesse bait. Is that in, in one way or another, it's letting you stay in the strike zone for as long as possible and really like when you know where that fish is you think you've pinpointed a spot it lets you fish that exact spot mm -hmm. that's to me just to me that's what makes a great finesse bait facts am i missing anything? Uh, great action ditto yeah great action i mean if you guys uh heard the rabid baits episode or the upcoming rabid baits video that i have filmed edited and is uploading <laughs> we'll say we'll These say my next, guys man we'll say this week as this is my this version of the post. Ned. This yeah. goes up next week, so it should be coming up within a week. So, yeah, by the yeah. time you hear this, it should be either up or coming up. It'll be up or coming up. So I got it done. We did We did a few rigging options for it. We talked about how finessey those, those soft plastics are. It's not, you know, you can't even aggressively, subtly approach those <laughs> things. <laughs> subtly aggressive? What do we say? Subtly aggressive. Yeah. You, you can't be subtly aggressive with those. Uh, they're super finessey. <laughs> there you go. Super like soft. You got to be gentle with those plastics. But because of that, they have the most amazing action out of almost any bait I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, like that is that is the action that we're talking about. Like what makes a great finesse bait. Like the action is definitely a big part of it. Um, we're going to talk about favorite bait. Spoiler alert: the big bite bait, Smalley Smasher, is like oh, a good example. You just gave it away. Wow. I had to because it's a good example of like a drop shot plastic that just has that action. Um, another example is like, uh, what is it? The KB, KBD Dream Shot, oh, right? Yes. KBD Dream Shots are, are a good option too. Um, mm. Z-Man has a, uh, an, a, a very, very similar to the Big White Baits, but like more durable. I almost put it down as mine, but it's not as good in action. Uh, but yeah, the, the Z-Man, what is that called? It might, it might, maybe that's the Dream Shot. I don't know. Whatever. They all look the same. It's like, it's like a short worm with a flat paddle tail at the end. Yeah. And it's got like a ribbed body. So it, it moves a little more water and has more like movement in the water. So yeah, I mean, action's, action's huge. Cause again, like we're talking about with power fishing, with uh, being aggressive with a, a bait, like flipping, you do all the movement. It's a stiffer plastic. It's a tougher plastic. It's not going to move as much by itself. It's a, a craw or a, a, a beaver style, bug style bait. And it's got those big old flappers. Those flappers only move if you move the bait. Otherwise, it sits on the bottom. Unless it's like a Tokyo rig, right? But you're just like pop, pop, pop. For the most part. Yeah, exactly. So you're moving that thing. With finesse, you let the bait do all the work. I mean, when, when the guys from Rabbit were on, like... It was just let the bait do its job. Just put it in the water, dummy. It's really, yeah. hard. it's yeah. really hard to do. Like it, this is okay. This is the last thing I want to say before we get into like what the people want, which is the list. But like oh, list. <laughs> but like 
it is with finesse fishing to me what i found to be what i found to be what i find to be difficult is you start out really aggressive you start out with like to me i love crankbaits i'm like a, I, I consider myself to be a big crankbait dude like that's what i really like to do i feel like i'm good at it. that's why i like to do it it's fun it's just fun like you're involved when you switch from something like a crankbait to a drop shot it is painful yeah. It is so because all of a sudden you go from like covering water and getting to a big area and just picking it apart. You go from that to like, I need to find a 10 foot by 10 foot square where I think there are fish. <laughs> I need to go there. I need to sit down. I need to take my time. I need to rig up a beautiful rig, cast it out and do nothing for 10 minutes. This is why I avoided drop shot for years. Mm. Like Paul has tried to make me do drop shot. I don't know if I'll ever <laughs> release. There, there's a video of Paul and I on uh, a lake after doing a salmon trip. And uh, it was, <laughs> he, he was doing drop shot. He tied on a drop shot for me. That's how like against drop shot I was. <laughs> <laughs> we cast out, we're in like 30 feet of water on a hump. And there's like some structure below us. And he's like, you know, there's probably rock bass and stuff here. And spoiler alert, there were. But like, <laughs> we just cast it out. And I'm just like, this is the worst. And I just complained the whole time. And then Paul pulled out like three, four fish and just made me more mad. <laughs> and, it's, and like yeah. one of them was so tiny and oh. he just holds it up to the camera. <laughs> He's like, yo. And then he pulls away slowly and you see that it's the size of my thumbnail. Unbelievable. <laughs> so good. I don't know. I, I gotta post that eventually. Yeah, it allegedly is, that happened. <laughs> it is. It is. It can be painful, but I'll tell you though. Um, just like with everything with finesse, when you when you have success and you kind of find a uh, the right time and place for it, mm-hmm. it is deadly. It is deadly. That yep. drop as an example. I went out. I planned on fishing topwater the whole day on Saturday. Last Saturday, I ended up jerk baits. And drop shot were the only thing I was catching fish on. And I could count on them. So you know what? Yeah. It happens. Um, are, and there are certain situations like that I will elaborate on that. Sometimes it's it's just the best way to go. But regardless. So what types of baits are there out there? So let's cover the let's f- co- cover the gamut. A to Z. Finesse baits. I'll say like A to L. We're going to get most of them. To I'm going to get every single one. Right? <laughs> let's go. Yeah. A to Y. Um, <laughs> so, you know. The, my number one is is like I already I put it out there. It's always gonna be number one. It's one of Jeff's favorite. It's also one of the I'll say like the hotter things that's out there right now. Well, Wait, right, sure. I, I'd say like it's like very popularized right now. Yeah, that would be the Ned rig. Yep. Jeff, do you wanna do you wanna walk us through the Ned rig? It's kind of your baby. Talk to me. So so the Ned rig, <laughs> my my baby. Oh man, how many Ned rig videos are on my channel? I don't Probably know. Probably ten out of a hundred. So 10% of my videos are Nedrig videos. Uh, yeah. So the, the Nedrig is an amazing bait that I accidentally stumbled upon and it hated at first until like a trip. We've already had the story on this podcast before. So go back and listen to episodes, but it was a trip. Paul and I each caught like 50 fish on it. Right. And it's essentially just a short worm, a stick bait worm, right? You could even just take your Senko, cut it in half. You got the exact plastic, right? This is what I did. Yep. And it worked that worked for Paul. I was using Z Man. I will forever be the Z Man fan. Uh because it just don't die. I can catch it's 50, amazing. It I is catch, it, last tech is incredible. Yeah. You, you catch 50 fish on one plastic, no change out. Like it's a good time. Uh but yeah, so it's that on a mushroom headed jig. And you can go open hook. You can weedless it on the open hook style. It's just a little tricky. You can get an EWG hook, which I'm waiting for our guys over at Woo Tungsten. Oh, woo. Tungsten is coming to, up. They're going to make us the most amazing EWG Tungsten Nedhead ever, and I cannot freaking wait. There are other ones out there. I just wait. <laughs> I'm just going to exactly. wait. Exactly. The they're done hook, that, I'll wait. Yeah, the open hook is great. Like, if you fish it right slow, then you're not going to get hooked up as much as you think. Like, I fish the open hook through straight, like, falling down trees, and I don't get stuck. Um, I fish it in rivers all the time. The only time I really go EWG anymore is if it's just, like, real rough situations. Sometimes on, like, really rocky sections, just because, like, the open hook will get just it's just going to get snagged. Like it's just going to happen, even if you're just drifting it. So when we were fishing, fishing. Uh, 
Yeah, bank fishing is good. Like you can't go get it. Like in my boat, I can go get it. If I'm waiting, I can go get it. Uh, if if I'm on the bank, it's gone, and then I'm just cutting off net after net after net, and that's a sad, sad day. They're wasting those Z-Man. That should last you a month. <laughs> exactly. Like we joke. Like I've had the same bag of copper truce uh, Z-Man net head or uh, the 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 finesse turd. They're called the real deal TRD. We call them the turd. Uh, I've had like the same bag for I don't know year two years could have it till the day i die (laughs) i have three bags of large turds i think i've only lost four or five maybe yeah it's absurd so yeah that's the net like it's just on a jig head and and yeah so so basically the action of the net there's a couple ways you can fish it we can talk about fishing stuff later if we need to but it sits on the bottom the mushroom style head jig helps it sit upright so you cast it out there into a spot it drops down, it settles into place, and it sits just up like this, right? Uh, just like if you're on YouTube, you can see I'm sticking my finger straight up. <laughs> but it sits straight up, kind of like a shaky head, just smaller. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of action because it's short, so it doesn't move. But it's just there, and it's like it it, it, it gets rocks. into a staring contest. Yeah, it, it yeah, it'll move a little bit like in the current back and forth, and you can also like pop it back to you. You can do the lift and swing method, or you can just dead stick it, which is what I honestly do most of the time. Or you can drift it through current in a river, which is freaking deadly. And if our last couple of videos haven't shown you that, go watch them. <laughs> the next video that I'd like to do is showing it wacky rigged on a very light octopus hook. That yeah. needs to be the done. Seaman turd. Yes. Uh, the big turd or the small turd? Big. Big turd. Yeah. Yep. No, I've, I, so I've, I've, we're going to talk about other methods, but I've Nico rigged and wacky rigged the, the big turd and also put it on a Tokyo rig. It looks pretty lit. That's I'm a good just thing. Saying, we got options. So that's, yep. that's the Ned. I think that's one that, you know, a lot of people may have heard about, maybe don't know about. It's not a new thing, but it's got new life because oh. I think people are realizing how awesome it is. And it's super easy to put it where you want it to be. Of all these baits, it's honestly one of my favorites because I can just put it where it needs to be. I like to flip the net. So I I don't cast it. I flip it. So if you guys watch me in my videos, you're probably like, this guy looks weird. But I'll just like hold the bait and like like you would do if you were flipping like a big weighted bait. Um, But even with like a one six one one eighth ounce net head, you can flip it and put it exactly where you want it to be. And we will talk about... And we'll talk about how you can do that with your rig too. Yeah. Because the rig is enabling this quite mm-hmm. a bit. Mm-hmm. Next we'll go, you already said it once. Anything <laughs> else on the Ned? No, man, it freaking kills it. Get it one. It does. It's a murder. <laughs> um, do it. And it doesn't look good. So just don't expect it to not look good. It looks so expect dumb. Expect it to look so stupid, but it hammers. Um, next, what, next I have Nico because it's very similar. So Nico rig, very complex comparatively and it's and it's and it's almost it's almost it almost looks identical to a ned when it's in the water it does give you some more flexibility though to do longer baits and have them look the way you really want them to look Uh, but again it's kind of like you're getting a shaky head so the the nico is um essentially a most people do it with a longer worm like a three to four inch worm longer short whatever just in general longer worm than what like a, a, uh, a like ned a would be or, or a stick bait sure yeah. and then you put um essentially a rubber band in the middle you don't have to but it definitely helps you keep more of your bait um and then you in the rubber band you almost like a wacky rig hook right through your bait so what you and then so what you'll end up with is what looks like a wacky rig so if you can see on YouTube, I've got my stick bait, which is my finger, right in the dead center. I'm just hooking the bait in the middle. And then right around where the hook is, there's a rubber band. The difference is I'm going to take a weight and I'm going to stick it right in the point of what my finger would be. So right in the in the head. And what that's going to do is that weight actually drags, it actually drags the head of the bait straight down. And then your where your line is tied in in the middle lets your kind of the tail of your bait do whatever it's going to do in the current. But when you jerk that thing around by the middle and with that weight in the head, you get this really nice vertical presentation that kind of bends in the center. So it's got a lot more action than what a typical Ned would have. And and you can hop that thing along pretty much anywhere. And there's a lot of different, not a lot, there are more and more weights like that are coming out. They have, mm-hmm. I've seen one that looks like it's screwing in, which I think is pretty sweet with a little more of a mushroom head. They've got nail weights, which uh, woo, woo, woo. 
Tungsten <laughs> is coming out with uh, well has their their nail weight, which I'll be. Yeah. Um, I haven't really used them yet. I'll be honest with you, but I'm pretty pumped to like They're get after slick. those. They look really nice. Yep. Um, and uh, and again, the one thing I want to call out with a lot of these tungsten does a lot because with a downsize presentation, when you can have more weight in a smaller package, you're having more impact on the weight portion, which is what you really want, like dragging the head of the Nico down, but it's less actual physical material of weight. That's that typically the more material you have for weights, it's, it's taking away from your action. So you have like with that dense tungsten weight, you have, less actual material in the head like more actual like usable weight that's doing what the weight is supposed to be doing in other words my nail weight instead of being an inch and a half long is like half an inch long and so i get more action out of my plastic and but i'm getting the same amount of weight and uh, the same you know the same like utility out of the weight so yeah that is so much it's so helpful um and it is a game changer i mean it makes all of this Almost every single one of these with a tungsten style weight, you're Sounds just getting, better. it's just, everything's just going to look and fish better. You're getting better contact with the bottom and, and it just fishes better because you have less material that's, impe- you know, gives you more, more action on your plastic. And better um, feel too. And we'll, we'll talk yeah. about rod setup here in a little oh, bit, yeah. but yeah, like lighter rod, lighter lines, like you want more feel. You can tell if it's a rock or if it's a fish. Oh yeah. And. That's important. Tungsten really helps with that. So um, that's the Nico. I think a lot of people are scared away from it. I know I have not been a huge fan of it because I know I can, I feel like I can do other things without it. I'm going to make myself use it. That's Dead, all I think. Wacky. Yeah. Nico. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to make myself use it's it. Maybe I'll, like, maybe I'll just like it way more. Who knows? I, I've, but, got, uh, I've got quite a few on the Nico. You know I like what? the Nico. I like I'm not going to say I don't like it. I'm just going to say, like, it's not a confidence bait for me. Like, I don't rig that up being like, I'm going to no. mash them today. I rig right. it up being like, I will probably catch fish today. I, I got a rabid baits pre-rigged Nico ready the to shaker go. Worm? Yeah, the, the, the shaker, shaker worm is ready to go. Yep. I like it. <laughs> um, all right. Next one. I'm taking the next one only because it's probably, it's kind of you, my, you my fish baby. it more than me. I like it yeah. a lot. Mine yeah. would be the, the drop shot. Yep. Drop shot, very simple. I'm um, coming along. I, I told this to you earlier. Like I'm coming oh, yeah. along. I'm going to drop shot a lot more. I, I love the drop shot now. There's a lot of things that... Yeah, there's a lot of subtleties to the drop shot. So yeah. it, it's simple. In, in general, it's very simple. At the end of your line, you have a weight. I like to see a drop shot style weight. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it because I think there's a lot of... Di- there's actually a lot Two, of different... Teardrop, cannonball, like... There's a lot of options. You, I've used nuts and bolts good. before, like just random <laughs> stuff I've had. Like you can use a lot of stuff. It doesn't matter. It well, it does matter. It really matters, but oh yeah, it can really matter. Mm-hmm. Essentially, though, you have some kind of weight at the very end of your line, and then at some distance above the weight, you have a hook that is facing point up. And whether you use like a couple of barrel swivels, the the kind of the pre-rigged setup, or you do what I do, which is I like to tie my own knot, and you essentially just do a palomar and then you take the tag in and loop it back through the top there will do be that. this this is in the video i like this it keeps the it keeps the hook face up keeps the bait vertical you don't need to do all this other stuff and it makes it easier to change out i, I just like it's it. better i think it's it, better but it's simple. It's way better very simple it does it does swing a little bit less so that pre-rigged actually allows the bait to swing left and right a little more mm-hmm. so there are there is that to it but I like more contact in the line. Yeah. So with a direct tie into the line, I feel a little bit more and I feel everything. I, I just, I prefer that. It's a preference thing. Um, but yeah, what this allows you to do is this basically says, okay, I know exactly what I want to fish. I see a spot that I want to fish. I can, I can have a lot of weight. If it's way down deep, I can have a little bit of weight. If it's maybe somewhere in the middle of the water column, I'm going to fish it a little slower. There's a lot of, you can upsize and downsize as needed. You can use a big old hook. You use a small hook. I like a light wire hook, which is like what you would call like a finesse hook. So I like like a, a light wire one knot. I think is a great size for most baits for like an EWG. I like a very small. It's called. It's essentially an octopus hook, but it's like a circle kind of hook. Um, that's for like a lot of. There's basically two. I think there are like two main rigs that people do for hooking the plastic to the hook. 
There's the hook the nose. So a lot of people like to use a very short worm, like a one inch, one and a half inch worm at the most, um, or some kind of little creature. And you just hook the nose. And so mm-hmm. that just gives tons of action. It's essentially as actiony as you can get in terms of rigging a plastic. I personally think that when you start getting short struck or, or if you get bass that aren't taking the whole thing or you're not feeling everything or you feel like there's or one fish in it. there. Yeah, or you lose your baits a lot, right? You're losing a, a lot, lot of baits. Or you see there's like one fish, you're like, I know there's a giant here and I do not want to lose this fish if he hits. What I like to do is I like to do take a light wire, one knot EWG, and then that covers most of the body of the bait. So the the hook point, you're actually like your attachment point, you're gonna try and button up that bass. It's actually in the back or the middle of the bait. And that mm-hmm. will mm-hmm. greatly increase your chances of a hookup. A solid hookup. It does reduce your action, period. There's no getting around it. It reduces your action. So um, there are pros and cons, but those are kind of your two, just in general, they're your two main. One thing I want to say is I have learned that if you really want to give the most action and get the highest percent hookups, I think this is more of a catfishing thing. Um, whenever there's current, what I really like to do is I like to, instead of tying the hook directly to the line, I like to do a short, stiffer leader. And that short, stiff leader will, one, let you feel everything, but it lets the bait just free float. Mm -hmm. You want something, you can't do it with, like, super heavy baits or else you have to, like, tight line it. You can do it with paddle tails. They work great. Um, Everything works really good with it, but I just, I like a shorter one if you're bass fishing. You don't need a real long one. Um, But once you tight line, like, once you drop all the excess line and you feel like okay i've got direct contact and a straight line from my weight that's at the bottom and you've got that little tag that thing's just floating out there and you can feel every little hit and that i'm telling you that is a that can be the difference between catching an absolute giant and catching nothing yeah that's a game changer with the drop shot but that's your drop shot again tuxton is a huge game changer um drop shot weights they're really nice because you don't actually have to tie anything they've got like a little crimp and you essentially just pull the you, you pull this little it, the 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 way the attachment point is it essentially pinches the line and it stays on there they work really well they don't it doesn't seem like it would work really well you can tie a safety knot at the bottom of your line so it doesn't slip out but those things work fantastic um i do prefer the vertical tube style that is I think the best slips through all the it slips through all the weeds and you can use it as more of a search bait as you're retrieving versus hopping yeah. it or whatever so yeah. that's the drop shot hit me with the next one, which is wacky. <laughs> I, you know what? Honestly, you guys probably know the wacky. Like that's probably the most commonly known, other than the Texas, maybe the Carolina that we're going to talk about. But mm-hmm. the wacky. So I mean, basically, you have a light wire hook. It's usually like a semi wide gap or like a, a little bit wider gap hook uh, at the bottom, which is going to accommodate the width of your worm. You're going to throw a stick bait, four, five, six inch stick bait, Senko, right? Worm on there. You're just going to hook it right through the middle. Or you can throw, Paul was talking about with the Nico. I don't know if you guys know this, but like you can get these bands that go around your your worm. You would do one for a Nico because the Nico hook goes lengthwise with the worm. The wacky goes through the middle perpendicularly. Uh, So you would do two bands and you cross your bands in an X formation and then the hook can go right through that X, and that means you don't lose your worm every single catch. Kind of important. Just a little pro tip. So just get those little like wacky bands. They're super cheap. You can get them at Bass Pro. Like get the little like sleeve thing, which I never freaking use, but is always on my life jacket. And Paul always makes fun of me for it. But I have like a little <laughs> wacky tube with the bands, yeah. and I never use them. But you slide two of those over X formation. Hook goes through the X. You now will not lose all your stick baits kind of big deal um but anyway so like you got a stick bait and that gives it more action too by the way uh but anyway so like you know you got your stick bait hook goes through it perpendicularly and like you're just gonna cast that thing out there you can go weightless as paul and i talked about way earlier in the episode it falls forever weightless wacky will do this in the water it will literally take 10 to 12 years to get to the bottom (laughs) of the water if you're in three feet of water 10 years (laughs) 10 feet of water a century like it goes <laughs> forever see the difference is like a weightless texas will like plop and then it does this thing yeah and then it's like the titanic and then it just mm-hmm. goes down right a weightless wacky will do just this sifting back. oh gosh it's so just terrible the bass well, that is it. 
That is juicy. So deadly. That is juicy. And you're staying in the strike zone. Dude, so important. Or you can throw a weight on it. I, I like to throw a woo woo tungsten. Uh, you know, wacky rigged weight. You go weedless. It's got like a little wire that comes out over the hook, so you're not as likely to hook up on stuff. But yeah, throw that around if you want to get down a little bit deeper or into like some rougher cover or whatever. Uh, or move faster like you can do that that's the thing with finesse too is it's like we say slow presentation it's generally slow but slow is a spectrum so you can go from like the wacky scissor weightless which is the, the far end of the spectrum super slow all the way up to like a quarter ounce tungsten wacky jig mm-hmm. where you're going to be like pop 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 and you're just moving this thing and, and that's the thing with the wacky that makes it so deadly by the way guys is like that Senko does this U formation as you're moving it. So it's just like flip flop and the ends are just moving back and forth as it sinks and rises through the water. And really all you got to do is like cast it out, let it sink, lift your rod tip. It moves back towards you reel down. So you got tight lines, let it sink, repeat, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's a super easy rig to use. It's a great bank fishing, dock fishing rig, like do it. If you're there, uh, dock along weed river. lines, yeah, dock fishing like wacky rig all day. Weed lines under trees, like any shade cover. I don't know everywhere. Basically, where finesse baits work, where you feel like you have a high percent of chance of running into a fish. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know the the thing with all these baits too, by the way, guys, is like you're gonna have to think between bottom, mid column, top. Like, do you want to go slow and just sift right in front of something? Like you're on a weed line. It's it's a ambush point. And you want the bait to fall really slow because, you know, there's just a freaking lunker sitting in there like, well, it's coming next and it's going to eat that. Or do you need to work the bottom because you're marking fish on bottom or you're getting bites when you're on the bottom? Stick to that. Or like a wacky where you're working through the middle column. You know, it's it's all kind of strategy. You got to understand your scenarios. And that's just experience. I mean, you guys heard our boy Alex Rudd was on the podcast a little (laughs) while back. You know, he talked about like learning these baits, which is what's great about like subscription boxes is it forces you to learn these baits, right? Um, But learning these baits and then understanding the situations in which they work best and then getting in that situation and then utilizing that bait. And that is experience talking. So we're spouting a whole bunch of stuff to you guys right now, but you got to go out on the water and just fish this stuff. Just try it, learn it, get used to like where it works, where it doesn't, and then do it. And now you got a whole bunch more tools in your tool belt that you can pull out whenever you need them. And that's Absolutely. the whole idea. That's fishing. That's fishing. There you go. So do you want to hit them? Do you... <laughs> close the, close the book. So do you want to hit them? Do you want to hit them with shaky head too? Yeah. So shaky, speaking of working the bottom instead of like working the column, uh, shaky head is like a Ned. If it hit a growth spurt, Right. So it's now still sitting vertical on the bottom, a li- sometimes vertical, sometimes a little more horizontal. It depends on like the shaky head you get. Um, you know, if you if you use like uh, the woo tungsten ones like they're uh, they don't have uh, as flat of a head. So they're going to rock a bit. If you use, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, MTB, I got one with like the antennae coming out of it. It sits. It's just there rigid. Um, I've got some VMC ones that have a very flat surface. You know, it, it varies from time to time, but you've got a, a basically a twist lock at the top. You're going to twist your worm into the twist lock, and then you're going to, you know, it, it's like it's a hook, right? So you just lace the worm on, and then you can skin hook it uh, so that it's weedless or mostly weedless. We Weedless, not weed proof. Right. We say that many times, uh, but yeah, the shaky head, the cool thing about it is you've got a longer worm. So you get the action from the length of the worm. If you use a trick worm, which I suggest, or a super long worm, my favorite would be the six cents shaky worm, uh, which is seven inches, I think. And it's just like ribbed all the way through, uh, and tapered at the end. So it's like a big trick worm and it just, oh my gosh, the action on that thing. I like to throw that thing weightless too, but that thing has, Crazy action, really great for a shaky head. Uh, highly recommend it. It's one of those things where like it's gonna work really good on like flat bottom, rocky bottom structure, things like that. It can work in the weeds, not not ideally, but you know it's something where if you know you're if you're targeting a spot, you know there's fish there, and you can cast to it like that. You just flip it out there, let it sit. It's one of those baits that'll just do all the work for you. Throw the rabid baits shaker worm on there. Just mm-hmm. saying, 
fantastic action with that too. Uh, but you just let it sit and the fish hate it like the Ned. The Ned's just a little more subtle because it's smaller, right? But the shaky head worm, that thing. Especially when you get those long tails with like a ribbon tail. Yeah. And when you're letting those sit, those tail things tails. are absolutely deadly. Absolutely. Yep. I feel like a lot of times, like if you look up like lists of like pros, all time favorite, you know, like fin- shaky head's going to come up on those lists a ton. It's it's a day changer, I would say. I, like it has changed my day multiple times, so mm-hmm. I I can definitely, uh, you know, echo that what what the pros say. Like I ain't no pro, but it's changed my day. Uh, I do like the curly tails. I've used the. Um, was it the Biospawn Exo Ribbon? Yep. Right. Uh, which is which is a catch co one. Um, but that is a, a super Great long. Babe. Yeah, it's like a super long uh tail, like the curly tail. Mm-hmm. Right. So that thing just like and, and the curly tails we're talking about is like just the super flat section of plastic. So it just rolls out there and it's just like whoosh, just moving crazy back and forth in the current and the water. Uh it's got a ton of action. And that's uh, also Exxon cool. just had that uh, 10 inch, 9 inch worm, the red one. Oh, Exxon? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we got the red one in our Monster Bass box. It's an 11 inch. Yeah. That was an 11 inch worm. That's a good looking worm, though. Big long curly tail. Yeah. That's a throwing that on a shaky head. You need like a real big shaky head, but uh, it's, it's pretty dope looking. Yeah. Um, all right. Next one, I will say. It, th- I feel like this is one of those things that can become a finesse lure, but it kind of runs the spectrum, uh-huh. which is basically a jig with some kind of swim bait, like plastic attached to it. Yeah. You can run them open hook. You can run them with a belly weighted, like wide gap. You can run them a ton. There's unlimited, it's essentially unlimited different ways. I think this is one of the more flexible ones out there. One of the most like in terms of options for sure. But the gist of it is, you have a jig, which is just a, I like a straight, sh- a straight shank hook um, with like a weight at the head and then some sort of soft plastic. I, one of my favorites is a paddle tail. Um, this lets you cover more water for sure. This is a downsized presentation. We're not talking about like a four inch bull shad or six inch bull shad or whatever. Um, we're talking about like one and a half, three inches kind of at the high range. The paddle tail, it's just the tail wiggling. Uh, and then those ball head jigs, though, are kind of one of my favorites. And they're so old school. Like, I don't think most people probably don't even carry them anymore. You get this great rock, this side-to-side rock. And that just can drive fish nuts. It's underrated, but it is, it just, it can be deadly. I That's how I started fishing in the river. And that is, I, like, my brain always wants to go there now. Um, yeah. Open hooks don't get hooked up nearly as much as you think. That obviously, if you're fishing into grass, you're going to get hooked up for sure. But yep. you can get away with fishing a lot of rock by changing the head type that you're dealing with or the jig that you're t- that you're trying to use by going to like a belly weight or a weedless. Um, you can rip that through a lot of stuff too because those hooks are super durable. Um, but as long as you're taking advantage of that kind of slower retrieve, the action of your plastic, um, that swim bait jig combo deadly. can just be so deadly. And there's so unlimited colors, anything from like white flash clear all the way to your chartreuse, like, you know, neon sunburst, solar flare, whatever. <laughs> it's like, it's a nice way to cover water in a for a more finessey way, right? So you're not okay. throwing chatter baits, square bills, spinner baits, big loud things covering water. You're throwing something very subtle. Even a swim jig to me is more subtle than that, but that's heavy. It's going on the bottom mm-hmm. uh, or lower in the water column. These are going to sit much higher in the water column or you can Damn. even go, yeah, or, or you can even go weightless, right? Uh, you can do like a weightless fluke maybe would fall in this category. Like a lot of guys are probably going to say that's their, uh, that's their jam. I know it. I know they're going to say that the white fluke fluke fluke. may not, or may or may not be on my list of favorites somewhere. So for those who don't know, fluke is like a, uh, it's kind of like a shad pattern, but it's instead of like a paddle tail or any kind of action on the tail, it trims out to essentially nothing and maybe a little fork Fork. at the end. Yeah. Um, Oh, they are, they do not look fishy to me. Out of in the package, I look at that. I'm like, what is this garbage? And they then you get at <laughs> they do, man. They're great. Yeah. Um, what's next? Do you want to do tubes? Or do you want me to do tubes? I can do tubes. Oh, 
So, so tubes. It's a jellyfish. <laughs> they were done. <laughs> the end. It's it's just it's a type of creature bait, right? So it's got like this long bulbous body that come in many different lengths and widths. Uh, I think most commonly that I fish is like what a three three point five inch, and um, you know it's got spindly little legs at the bottom, like dangly. What would you call them? I don't even know. Skirt. It's essentially skirt. a skirt at the okay. at the end. So just yeah, imagine like a imagine a finger that just got is like a finger for two thirds of the body, and the last third it's got to actually run through a shredder. And there's just like a, it's gruesome. Just, yeah, it's, it's gruesome. Ruthless. This is your example. Yeah. This is when you're like it's, you're talking to a four year old girl down the street. Accurate. She's like, hey, hey, Paul, what's tell me about tube date? You're like, okay, what's a give tube me your bait? finger. You're like, check this out, dude. Just meat spaghetti. <laughs> like, <laughs> Actually, there you go. Okay, um, nobody goes to Paul's house anymore. <laughs> but at any rate, so that's tube, guys. The end. Oh, yeah, uh, but anyway, so it's hollow in the middle. <laughs> back to reality here uh and you know you can rig it you can texas rig it which is like my favorite way to do it which you can weightless you can throw obviously a weight on top of that uh you know that's absolute murder in rivers when you throw a little weight on it or you can throw it on a tube jig which is fantastic tube jigs are amazing it's like all the weight is there all the weight goes inside of it so if you're watching on youtube it's like here's a tube here's a tube jig you just slide it on top that's it and at the top you got your line tie so you just kind of like push the line tie through the plastic and tie onto that. It's an exposed hook. You might get caught on something. You just, you know, just, you know, fish it finesse and you'll be less likely to catch on stuff. Or you could Texas rig it with a peg like I have done. And then you're essentially running a weedless tube. So like a, a bigger tube over a tube jig, like a tube. Imag- a imagine made for the tube jig an EWG. Okay. Like a like a light hook, a light wire, mm-hmm. rig it with the like you would rig any other plastic, and then you take a, a weight and you have your bullet weight in the front, one eighth or less, and then you actually peg it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, a hundred percent great option. One of my favorite ways to rig it. The tube jig's a great way to rig it. Uh, I would use a tube jig. Personally, for me, like more on lakes than on rivers, like the Texas, I use in rivers all the time. Uh, and then weightless on lakes is fantastic, too, because we've already talked about why weightless is great. You just want to fall in front of their face for 10 to 12 years. And if, like, you're, in, yeah, and if you're in a lake, one thing I will say, I tend to fish tubes like I would fish like a Texas rig worm where I'm pulling it up towards almost the top of the water column and letting it fall pulling, reeling, pulling it, let it fall, reel, pull it, let it fall. The other thing that I think that a lot of people forget to do is I I sky bomb. I cast that thing as high as I can pop, as I possibly can, let it catch as much force as possible. And when that thing plops, that hollow plastic, when it hits the water, the plop is unreal. And so you get really good at just like dropping bombs on like a small area and you let the thing scissor down, it'll get absolutely blasted so that's you take advantage of the hollow body that's that's my tip for a tube. small mouth small mouth candy guys small mouth candy. if you want to just hammer smallies like a tube next to a ned rig for me a tube or a craw like a the z-man cross or uh you know just just smaller body craw baits like fantastic oh yeah and then i think the other thing with tube is um color can be i think color i don't know why but it's one of the few times where i think like color is incredibly important. Yeah. I don't know why to, because mostly to me, color, I don't think matters as much. I think it's more action and like the way it's being worked and where it's being used. But for whatever reason, (laughs) for me, I'm like hyper superstitious or or superstitious. To (laughs) me, I have my favorite colors and like, you can't talk me out of it. What are your favorite colors or is that coming up in your, it'll be coming up in my, my (laughs) all right. Do you want to Carolina or do you want me to? You do Carolina, man. I hate that thing. I'm just kidding. All right. Carolina rigs are legit. If you Carolina know rigs them. are super legit. If you so know how to use them. This is an oldie but a goodie. This is definitely one that so if you good. know how to use it, it's one of yours. There's a couple of, there's a lot of different, I'm going to say there was a lot. There's some standard tenants of a Carolina, Carolina rig. There are some variations. I'm not an expert. I'm not going to go through all the different ones. I'll go through a couple that I know of that I know people that use. I'm not a huge Carolina guy. The dudes at uh, Rabid are trying to convince me and it's working. <laughs> it's the, working. what you have is 
you have a you have your you have a line, uh, and then you have a, a barrel weight, and then a bead, and then you have a barrel swivel, with, uh, and then to the end of your barrel swivel you have whatever your leader is going to be, and then you have your hook choice. A lot of people I feel like are using straight shank worm hooks because you rig it weedless, yeah. and then you're typically again this is not. This is not the only way to do it. Typically going to see some sort of worm, like what we were talking about, like a ribbon worm. Lizard. Or or you're going to see a lizard, some kind yeah. of creature bait. Those are going to be probably your two more common yeah. options. Um, unlimited. You can put anything on the end of it. You can put a brick on the end of it. It's probably going to work. It's mm. just... Well, well, actually, a brick's a terrible example. I, I doubt that put, a brick will work. <laughs> yeah, a brick would actually not work. That's a brick a made, out of, because of, made weight, out of elastic. A weightless brick. Elastic brick. A square-shaped <laughs> piece of plastic might work. Not something heavy. So the idea here is you got weight uh, in front of that barrel swivel with a bead that's got uh, is going to is gonna help hold your weight and provide some color. A lot of people put a clacker, which is like a little like sound chamber that's like creating a bunch of sound. Um, but you're getting these like little puffs and these little... Like, like as you're dragging that through, um, and again, a bullet weight is what most people use. There are different kinds. They have like cyl- cylindrical weights, and there's all different kinds of Carolina weights. But a lot of people are using a bullet weight, so I'm just going to stick with that. Relatively weed less, um, but you've got this. You know, you've got the ability to like have a lot of contact with the bottom, know what you're fishing, and then like anywhere from like 10 inches to like 18 inches behind, you've got this like weightless plastic that's kind of like floating behind it it can look like something chasing whatever your weight is a little puff it can look like it can it can just look like it's on its own and it's just sort of floating and drifting on its own with like unlimited action behind it this thing can be absolutely deadly i feel like a lot of dudes that this is like either your thing or it's kind of not i don't know a lot of people who are like semi-committed to a carolina rig that may not be the case but that's just how i feel based on my experience if you're into it you can just slay with this and there are a couple pros who have essentially made a career off of finding a shelf or finding, you know, doing this in the river and just, just stringing them up. Yeah. So that's your Carolina. Sick. Texas. You want Finesse, that? Finesse Texas. <laughs> yeah. Finexus. <laughs> so yeah, Texas rig, we already talked about waitlist. That's kind of my go-to if we're talking finesse. Uh, or I'll throw like an eighth of an ounce on there, like just a very small worm weight, something that's going to make it fall a little bit slower, um, able to move it. Like Texas rig, typically it's like a worm on a straight shank or EWG hook, and you've got a weight above it. You're going to peg it if you're trying to get through grass or cover a little bit more. You want to peg that weight so you're less likely to get wrapped around stuff or hung up. Um but you throw that on, you rig that worm weedless, you know, the, the way that you do that, we show you on YouTube videos and stuff. Anyways, <laughs> so you cast that thing out there, you let it plop, you let it fall down. If it's weightless, it falls for 10 to 12 years. We already talked about that. If it's weighted, it's going to fall in like five, 10 seconds. Gets to the bottom, you're just going to lift that rod up almost to the top, and then you're going to let that worm fall again. So you're getting the action both on the uptick and the downtick. And the worms are gonna see that, and they're just like, or the worms, the the bass. The worms like, oh, the, the worms like, eaten. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't you know that's how we get at <laughs> the other the other fallen stick baits from other fish. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no. like, Bro, don't don't let that don't let me be you. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, anyways, the bass, the bass. I stand corrected. The fish will see this worm. And they're going to go like, what the heck is that? And they're going to go and they're going to strike. And the Texas is another kind of like the Carolina. It's like a super old school, but but like an oldie, but a goodie for a reason because it just heckin' works. So if you guys don't throw the Texas, you should throw it. I mean, especially if you're like bank fishing, uh, fishing from the dock, fishing from the bank. It's an amazing one. And then like if you know the water you're covering and you want to fish on the bottom, it's one of the best ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I will say like Carolina, Texas – um, the swim bait, uh, even the shaky head to some degree, these can fall into other categories. You can upsize these. You can use different plastics. <clears throat> these are just the finesse version of a Texas to me is like the weightless or very lightweight. When you see, um, like if you're in the river and you can see a, a pool and you just want to get plop on right in the middle of that pool, 
weightless Texas is going to just do work. Or you throw it up ahead and the current and let it sweep past right in the middle um, of a spot where, you know, fish is waiting to ambush, things like that. I mean, it's just, or a dock, right? Or again, it's just like you you know, you feel like you know with high degree of confidence, you, you know where fish is going to be. You want to target that fish as best as possible. That's kind of like what the finesse is doing um, versus like a Texas rig when you're flipping it. And it's big old, you know, one ounce weight or whatever, and this big chunky beaver, you know, style bait, and you you punch it right through a you know big grass. That's not finesse. I'm not saying that that's finesse. This is there's just a way to use this to your advantage in a in a way that is very finessey. And so like you're going to use lighter plastics, more action, blah 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 blah. We already talked about that. So I just want to clarify with those last couple of rigs because they do sort of fall into some other categories as well, and we will cover them in other in other times as well. Uh, but they are, they do, uh, to me, to me, they qualify as finesse Um We talked a little bit about this, but like in general, when are you reaching for like a finesse bait? I, we already when the feel fish, like the when, crap out of this one. When, when the fish don't bite. That's the big thing, right? You feel like you know where, you are, where they are and you, and you yeah. feel like everything you're doing is not working. That's a good time to go grab one. Yep. Hot summer, dude, like yeah. ultra light wacky. That can be the ticket. I also always just get a feeling. I just get a vibe. That's every time Jeff grabs his Dobbins. Time to. <laughs> this uh, is 80% of the time. Not, not the Dobbins. It's the Dobbins died. Oh, that's right. They had to bring that up, you right. jerk. <laughs> that Dobbins is. Somebody, somebody must have got that. Somebody's thing. got a dope rig. <laughs> somebody picked up a Dobbins with a President XT, and good for them, man. Good for you, you jerk. But no. Uh, we don't grab that one anymore. <laughs> that, that's the the uh, the medium ducket Silverado. <laughs> that's that's the Ned Rod. Yeah, I should try it. That thing is a yep. monster. It's a ducket as well. It's that's a good rig for that. So um, when it's not working, uh, what do you typically do? When like finesse, if, you're, if, yeah, if you've got a finesse rig on, like what's your what's your first move when like whatever it is that you're doing finesse is not working? Switch the finesse we talk like about right. plastic yeah yeah all right so i'm not gonna be if i'm if i'm ned rig fishing and they don't bite the ned i'm not gonna be like oh it's the chartreuse or the shark deuce right call it the shark the shark turd right the shark turd if the shark turd doesn't work ain't no turds gonna work <laughs> like i'll just toss the ned but the, the main thing i would think about is like all right if, if i'm ned rigging i'm fishing the bottom fishing slow let's fish up on my drop shot right uh if drop shots not working i'm like all right let's drift through the column weightless texas right so i'll probably stay finesse because I'm, I'm i'm probably on finesse because the other stuff wasn't working like the main stuff the the moving baits the body baits the chatter baits the blade stuff like that wasn't working so i'm on finesse and if I'm on finesse and the first finesse I pick doesn't work, go to the next finesse, move through the column, do something different that has a little different type of action. I'm not going to worry about color too much. Like I generally know, you generally know like where we're at. We know what colors work. Like not every color works. We're not, let's just say we're not throwing like a whole bunch of PB and J color baits or mm -hmm. orange. Like it kind of depends on what water we're in. If the Grand River's like, really high and really muddy it's like it doesn't matter they can't see anything anyways you got to hit it right on the freaking head but like generally if we've got semi-stained water that's like every single body of water just because of like leaves around here falling in the water and, and whatever other reasons but you know it's generally stained so chartreuse fantastic color so like i'm gonna throw that and then we're gonna go from there to darker or lighter so I'm not too worried about the color. I'm worried about like what the bait is doing. So mm -hmm. I would check like different areas of the water column and then like either slow down or speed up. I don't know. Like just kind of mix it up, but stay finesse. Yeah. I typically for me, if you're trying to, if you, if you feel like you, you know your spot and, and your first rig's not working, what I, to just point, I'm, if I was targeting the bottom, I'm going to start targeting like the middle of the water column or I'm going to do a slow fall. And then if that's not working, I'll, I'll stay, I'll, I'll go to the top. Um, and if I, or I'll try something horizontal, right? Something moving like a, like a jig, right? Um, and so to me, that's the biggest thing with finesse is trying to figure out. And then, you know, if I feel like, dude, I'm right in their face, I'm getting struck, but I'm not, I'm not catching that fish. 
that's when you start i'm adding a tag to my drop shot i'm switching up my hook so go. that the hook points further in the back um those are the types of things that you can do to just be more effective and like to me the, uh, the biggest thing that i'm going to just when it's not necessarily the color even though and i know some people live and die by color i typically don't um but targeting a different part of the water column i think is really really important so if you start in the middle hit the bottom if you start in the bottom hit the top if you're doing something that's horizontal try something vertical if you're trying something that's slow fall try a fast fall um you know if you were jigging real slow increase your speed whatever it happens to be that's those are the types of things that i'm going to do um versus just get out of the finesse game too early because i think that's where people lose is when you give up too early you're not letting the bait do what it's supposed to do you have to give you have to let you have to do the bait justice and the rig justice big time when it comes to finesse it just sometimes it just needs a little more time um that's why it's hard to some a lot of people it doesn't become the confidence bait um because people just don't give it it's due and i think you do need to give it some time it requires a little more patience i think it's a slow bait so you can't expect it to work fast yeah it takes just time. saying <laughs> um rigging is critical i think oh yeah very it's just very critical yeah. um the the thing that the thing that makes it so critical is you're using lighter baits and lighter weights but you need as much sensitivity as possible but you mm-hmm. also need a nice strong hook set um <laughs> if you're chasing like bass and things like that where, where you yeah. got to have a good hook set because you're using a smaller hook yeah. so um Man, it's a it's a rough balance, but this once you get a rig that you really like, you'll be in on it forever because you can feel everything, you can catch anything, and you can cast these things. You need to be able to cast a lot of the stuff. Like some of it, you just you're using super light tackle, so you're not going to be able to cast it a quarter mile with every rig. So, um, in order to get that perfect combo, this is these are some general parameters, but they are very important. First and foremost, you're you're using a spinning outfit mm-hmm. nine times out of ten. So you're using a, I like a 2000 to me is the sweet spot, size real. 2500 is probably the biggest I'm going. I feel like 3000 is way too big. You can go a little bit smaller and I wouldn't be mad about it, but I think 2000 is that sweet spot for bass fishing. Would you agree? Oh yeah, 100%. Um, so I, I don't, I don't, you know, I've, I've used like on the ultralight, like mm-hmm. sometimes smaller than that, but I'm not a big fan. Like 2000, 2500 just feels right. Yeah, two thousand. I think is the money. Um, Twenty five hundred yeah. if that's what they've got at the shop. But two thousand yeah. to me is just perfect. Um, your rod, I think, is the next most important thing. I like a seven, seven and a half foot. This is where it gets weird because I'm going to say medium to medium heavy, mm-hmm. but you want the the most important thing with the medium to medium heavy is you want something that's got a long backbone, like a fast, fast action. Mm-hmm. But it's got to have a pretty sensitive tip <laughs> like that yeah it's got to be fast to extra fast to me if you're using a medium you want it to be like fast to extra fast if you're using a medium heavy i want fast yeah you don't want slow because what's going to happen is you're going to miss you're going to miss bites unless you're actually watching your hook tip versus with a fast action, I'm going to feel all that because that backbone is giving me all that vibration. Um, and then the way you're going to feel all of that action, because again, feeling is everything with these baits. The way you're, the reason you're going to feel everything, I like to use braid. Mm-hmm. I like a, you can go down to 10. I prefer like a 15. I think 15 is the sweet spot for some of the lighter rigs. You can go up to 30. I think that's a little heavy, but you could go up to 30. Um, and then you're going to, especially if you're going up past 15 or 20, you're going to want to have a mono leader six to 10 pound is what I have on here. I think that's a pretty tight range. You could go a little bit heavier, but six to 10 is where I would want to be. I like a nice long leader. If I have a leader on, I we're talking, I have written in my notes, eight feet. I think anywhere between six, four at the absolute least. So we'll say like four to 10 feet, but like four to eight feet really, I think is probably the sweet spot. Eight feet, eight foot is where I like to be. I will say the heavier braid you use, I like to see a little bit longer leader. Yeah, my my setup right now is the seven three, no, it's a seven foot. Seven foot Silverado Ducket. Uh, it is a medium, fast action. 
And on that, I have the, uh, what is it? The Shimano Sahara. Mm-hmm. Not the biggest fan of the reel, but it's a 2000 size reel. It's just, the reel hasn't made me super happy. But I mean, Shimano reels, pretty solid. It's still smooth. The bail is misshapen. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not great, but solid combo, I would say. Uh, probably upgrade the reel at some point, but I like the rod a lot because I can. Like Paul was saying, like I I I have a twelve pound braid on there. I can feel everything, everything. If I'm drifting that net through the river, I'm feeling like rock, 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 fish, and like I can tell that difference. That's how clean it is. Especially then, if you have this next piece, tungsten, then you really feel it. So like that's another big piece of that rigging uh, that we're getting to here is like you got all this other stuff. Great, it's gonna be fine if you got lead weights. It's fine if you really want to be more sensitive and really like if you're missing bites go tungsten you'll get better contact you'll feel literally everything it just works better and like i'll say it paul say it paul probably has said it more times than not like you probably held out on tungsten right because it's just expansive it's just expansive and like lead's so cheap and it also works and that's the old man fishing way uh, which is Paul. Paul's an old man fisherman at heart. But tungsten just straight works. So eventually you become a convert once you do it enough times. And you're like, ah. It makes uh, a big difference. Yeah, for sure. Just do it. And I will say um, my rig, I've got the Ducket Triad. I think it's 7.2. Yeah. But I need to go check. Something like that. 7 to 7.6, seven, somewhere in there. Um, triad. It's a, it's a thin rod. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's got a ton of backbone. It goes all the way to the top. So it's a medium, fast. I love it. It is a, it is, and then I've, it is a game changer. And then I've got the Daiwa, um, the Cabela's brand tournament ZX Daiwa um, spinning reel on it, 2000. It is perfect. It is, to me, it's perfect combo. Could not ask for more out of it. It is exactly what I wanted. I feel like I could catch any fish in the lake in terms of, you know, size because of all the backbone. But the mm. sensitivity on it is I can watch things happen. I can feel everything happen. I recently went from I've got 15 pound braid and then I've got a an eight foot uh, six pound test mono leader. I love it. I really, yeah. really it is a it makes a big difference. And the reason I I really say braid and I'm not leaving an option to have all mono is because braid gives you a lot more sensitivity because it's so yeah. stiff. You get more sensitivity. So like you could go to a much shorter leader, like a two to three foot leader and probably be okay. I like it a little bit longer, but that braid's giving you sensitivity. So you can go straight braid and that's fine. Mm-hmm. It's just with the lighter presentations, like smaller presentation, taking the braid away and giving you that clear mono connection point that's helping you. And it's also giving you more flexibility for your bait. So like if you're net rigging, mm-hmm. the difference between catching a fish and not catching fish in clear water could absolutely be having not braid connection, like having a mono connection. So I will yeah. throw that out there. But braid is very important as your base. It should I think it should always be your base. It just gives you a lot more, a lot stronger connection to your to your bait. When again, that we talked about this in the woo, tungsten episode, fishing <laughs> as a contact sport. All of, all of this is geared towards you feeling the contact between you, like feeling the connection, the strongest connection between you and the base. You can feel everything that's going on. So you're not missing anything, whether it's contact with the bottom, knowing what you're fishing, or when you get a hit. Um, all right. Without further ado. Game time. Top five favorite finesse <laughs> style bait. You guys have made it this far. Yeah, if you made it this far. What's 2024 like? We're at the end of the episode. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my weightless wacky to fall. <laughs> it's almost halfway there. It's almost to the bottom. <laughs> um, all right. Me first or you? It's a probably a tie, right? <laughs> it's the same number one, man. I know it is. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Ned and Shark Deuce. Big shark Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the shark turd, if you will. Yeah. So our number one needs no introduction. It is the sh- Copper Truce is the color by Z-Man. Copper Truce, if you guys want to go get your finesse turds from Z-Man, tell them Burly Fishing sent you. Tell them to start sending us royalties. We sell probably none of those. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but the fantastic 
elastic plastic. It catches dozens and dozens of fish before it dies. I freaking love it. I prefer to throw it on an open hook. I know you do too. And it's on the uh, woo tungsten Ned heads, which are fan freaking tastic. Yeah, Gamakatsu hooks, like good bait keeper, which is great for the Z-Man. Like the better the gate, uh, the the bait keeper, the better the bait stays on the hook. So it's good. <laughs> and like, you tip know, on that, by the way, I used to yeah. push mine on. Yeah. To the, I used to push them on. Mm-hmm. I stopped doing that. I pull. now pull them from the head. What a difference. You, you have to do it. So if you guys have like that <laughs> classic bait keeper hook, so on, it's like the inverse of the hook. It's just on the back side of the hook, right? You with a Z Man with the Elastic, it's too stretchy and, and and like buoyant and and pliable to move to push like a normal plastic would. You have to pull it towards the head of the hook or to towards the weight, right towards the weight end. But <clears throat> yeah, pro tip there that definitely oh, helps. Game but anyways, yeah, tungsten net heads, also game changer. This is a river oh, nightmare. Sure. It's so good. It. Yeah. It's so good in the river. It's crazy. It's great on lakes. But so good in the river. All right. That was an easy one. What's your number two? Uh, so my number two is that Sixth Sense Shaky Head Worm on a, I, I guess I prefer like the VMC or the Woo Tungsten. If I'm going Tungsten, it's going to be Woo. Uh, but the the Woo makes that really nice like rocking Shaky Head uh, jig, which is pretty fantastic. I was using VMCs before that, but they ain't tungsten. So, you know, your boy is switched. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So, yeah, that's that's a good one, man. That's a seven inch trick worm. And I like to throw it in purple or they have this like green and blue, which I forget what the color is named, but it's pretty lit. I love it. What's yours? Uh, mine's a, it's a drop shot. Quarter ounce woo drop shot weight. Uh, mm-hmm. I like that in the the green. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, with a with a zoom brand fluke. There it is. Uh, in <laughs> what I like it in white. Uh, it's not white. I, I white. like white. It's white ice, and uh, it has um, like a like a really small sparkle in it. Yeah. I just like that a lot more. And then, uh, but the game changer is it's pink. You gotta get the pink. Dude, the bubble, bubble, it's gum? bubble. I think it's bubble gum is their brand. Yep. I have the jumbo. Uh, there's two things of Zoom that I have the jumbo bag in. It's their watermelon trick worm and their um, <laughs> bubble gum fluke. And I, I just pink can just be the thing that makes a month of fish. It is game, oh, yeah. game changer. But yeah, drop shot for sure. And then I use any kind of hook that I think is necessary for the day. So I'm not. I do not subscribe to a specific hook for that rig. Sometimes it's the <laughs> octopus. Sometimes it's the uh, te- uh, EWG. Kind of depends. Yep. yep. Uh, my third one is a new one for me. Technique that I recently picked up on my favorite lake, and I've now bought in 100%. It's a weightless Texas. Uh I like using the, yeah, Paul is so stoked because I, I told him about this, that trip that I did it. I was like, bro, did you know weightless Texas is like pretty great? And Paul was like, shut up, idiot. I told you that forever ago. <laughs> but Paul's like, just so happy that I'm like coming along on this, old man, this old man journey with him and like I slow it. it. I'm slowing down. Like Paul talked about, like, I'm usually, uh, what, what was it? Aggressively subtle. Yeah. <laughs> like, Subtly aggressive. aggressive. Totally aggressive. So I'm slowing down a little bit, man. In my old age, you know, I'm 32. I ain't, I ain't you know, young spry no more. But <laughs> like, like the weightless Texas with, the, I prefer a stick bait or that that same six cents, that shaky worm, seven inches. Ju- 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 oh my it's god, juicy. the action on that, it's so juicy. Uh, but I'll throw that or like. We had the Lunker Hunt stick worms in last month's Monster Bass box. Those were great. Like a five inch stick worm is fantastic. And again, like Weightless Texas, what's it do? It just plops and then it does a Titanic sink. You just wait. Straight down. Yeah. Just wait for the fish to eat. It's great. Color wise, I would say uh, if it's the if it's a shaky head, purple. Purple's cheat codes. And I'm gonna be talking about purple later. I if it's it. If it's not the shaky head, I'm gonna throw probably just watermelon right now. Watermelon does work, or or uh, candy grass, a little mm-hmm. purple flex, like that does work too. My number three, 
would be a jig and a paddle tail. I've caught more fish on jig and a paddle tail than probably okay. close to anything else. It's how I learned to fish. Yep. I like the uh, the North Tackle one eighth ounce eyeball jigs. They're cheap. You can get them anywhere. They work great. They have hook keepers. The VMC Moon Eyes can be an absolute game changer, though. Like if you're looking to up- upgrade, oh, oh, yeah, that is a quality, well worth the money upgrade. Um, but again, eight ounce is my go-to. It, it allows you to do a ton. You can drift when the current's super high, but you can get down and then reel up if you need to um, in like a standard, in most standard situations. Um, and then it's not too big. That's the other thing I really like. The other thing I like about having the eye on, um, it allows me to take larger like fluke shad minnow patterns and I can bite the head off to match the exact size of the head yeah. or rip the eyes off of my... Um, my Berkeley, the Berkeley power bait paddle tails, and then you still have the eye presentation. So I actually do that a lot. Um, pro tip, pro tip. That's just something I've done for a long time, but it, it helps make sure that because the shad patterns, they start small and they get big and then they get small again. If you want to have a really good rocking action, you have to have the biggest part of the bait be the head of the jig. And so I always yeah. bite and trim my swim baits to to match the exact just under to be a little bit small like just a little bit smaller than the head of the ball jig um but my all-time favorite it's not even close paddle tail it's a smaller brand called walleye assassin they have a new brand now called bass assassin but walleye assassin paddle tail comes in three inch their colors are freaking awesome i'm telling you look them up it, this is my old man coming out. I will never, nothing will ever be better than this. They're so good. They they actually stopped making my favorite one. They they had a chartreuse with salt and pepper, or uh, just salt, chartreuse and pepper. It was all chartreuse with a white belly and then black flex through it. It oh, I still have three bags of it, and I'm like so scared to use them because I'm gonna lose one. <laughs> they are they are great for they catch everything. Bro, but they hang do it on have, the wall. Oh, so that's a wall. <laughs> I need to. They have chartreuse and glitter though, which is almost as good because it's like a dark, like gray glitter. It's amazing. That that walleye assassin turbo shad. That's what it's called. Nice, so good. So my fourth one is similar to yours, but I'm gonna go with the underspin on a belly weighted hook. So if it's belly weighted, no underspin. I'll go with the woo, but woo does not have a bladed underspin yeah. belly weighted hook yet. Guys, Aaron, please, please, <laughs> please, Aaron. Uh, that'd be great. But right now, your only choice really is like VMC. Like VMC crushes it. Uh, they've, they've got the the newer uh, blade underspin for the belly weights is like there's this wire that comes down and drifts behind it, which is great. It puts the blade in a better position. Blade's less likely to get knocked off. Like that was the issue. I used to love the uh, flashbang by carl's bait and tackle i still think have was... a couple still love them that was one of the best things i got out of those boxes yeah can i can i have one nah, bro i've got four one. i have Just, two packs can i have one no what the hell bro <laughs> anyways we're not friends anymore not that good uh, friend. <laughs> <laughs> so the flashbang was great the flashbang uh i've lost a lot of them and the blades kind of fall off from time to time it's just on there by like one split ring right so the vmcs are pretty nice um if you want just a regular belly weight underspin i'd recommend the woo i think it's pretty fantastic and i will throw always a four inch kai tech in the white the white is my favorite color because it's like you said like it's not just white it's like glacier white it's like white with like that clearish Pearl, opaque man. top yeah, it, it's such a good color. And like the four inch is just such a great size for it. And it just crushes it. That's one of my go-to. Like I'll, I'll just hammer on like shallow lakes with that all day long. Love it. My number four striking uh, coffee tube, three and a half inch. Yeah. Um, this is where this is where I get weird about color. It's, it's got to be purple and white. Like. Interesting. One eighth ounce jig head uh, or a tube head jig. Yep. that rig i've rigged tubes like tons and tons of times in tons of different ways i've never had anything work that good and i'm gonna tell you right now maybe i'm just thinking smallmouth but like i know with flies my purple my purple flies like i'm talking purple purple like royal purple like 
not like yeah. peanut butter jelly like type i'm talking like royal almost like bluish purple yep that purple i have i could take you could take everything away from me and just give me one purple fly and i'd be happy yeah, if i'll catch fish i'll catch small ones i'm yeah. gonna do it i'm just gonna do it purple tubes are the equivalent they're so good they are yeah Mm. So white and purple, though. Those are my... If you get both, great. If you get one or the other, great. Anything else, just burn it. All right. Number five, last one. Go. All right. So my last one is also a new one. And this is like... This is funny because I just made fun of this box. But Warrior Tackle Supply hooked me up. And I, I, like, I've been thinking about this bait for a while. Uh, JC Dropshot actually kind of like talked to me about it a little bit. Um, popped into the Monster Bass channel, like a bunch of the Monster Bass ambassadors were talking about this. So I was like, ah, I gotta pick up this bait. But it's the Big Bite Bait Smalley Smasher. And it's similar to, we're talking about the KVD Dream Shot. You know, it's one of those like half shell worms. So it's like flat on bottom, round on top with a tapered tail that's paddle at the end, right? It's got a ribbed body. It's got tons and tons of action. And they sent me, of course, chartreuse and white. So I was like, yeah. Chartreuse. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use to me. Uh, hashtag that's the, the Yeti that matches my boat. I have a chartreuse boat, you guys. Like you, our logo is chartreuse. Are you kidding me? Of course I like that. So this bait, like everything else in that box sucked. Let's just be real. But that bait was fantastic. And uh, I rigged that up. The way Paul was talking about, I used the uh, standard wide gap hook, not the extra wide gap. Just like standard wide gap hook. Nose hooked, the smallie smasher got bit off on one, and that's the issue you run into with nose hooking uh, on the drop shot with a tube weight at the bottom. Oh, woo, tungsten tube weight, I might just say. Uh, but the the plastic gets ripped off if you get short striked, right? So I got short struck, cast out again with a new plastic, hooked into a bass. You know, little guy, decent one, but lots of fun. That was fun. That was on that lake that I really enjoy fishing a lot. Um, and drop shotting being something I'm getting, you know, more into now, I could see myself fishing that plastic a lot. So I'll say drop shot is my fifth one. I want to do it more. That plastic is just like probably an easy go to. And when you buy the big bite baits, like that, that bag, I think you get 12. So it's like, you got, you got probably a day of fishing that that'll last you a day. Really? Yeah. How, I mean, how many a full day of just using that? Yeah, probably not. I, well, you wouldn't just use that. Probably you use other things too. But I'm just saying, like, you got 12 plastics. I mean, you can get away with a lot right there. It's Easy. a pretty good quantity. That's a pretty good quantity. Oh, 12 solid. It was like the one plus that like saved that box for me. I gave that box a five out of ten, <laughs> which whatever that means. I just made up a scar. <laughs> I was basically on the channel. I was like, "Do you guys want me to like score things now? Because like I can score things." Because I, I just know. started five. I just did five <laughs> out, out of, of what? I don't know. One hundred. <laughs> ah, yeah. great. Yeah, right. it was like right up the middle for me. But that was that was a really great bait in that box. I'll I'll give it that. My number five might sound familiar. Weightless Texas. Never heard of her. <laughs> oh Jesus. Uh, yeah, <laughs> love love the. Love the Love the Weightless Texas, uh, but mine's a little so bit different. So the Zoom Trick Worm, I've yeah. had days where that thing is, there. nothing else works like it. Um, In what color, Paul? What colors? Old purple watermelon oh. chartreuse. Now the old watermelon chartreuse, it's obviously watermelon through and through, but the very end of the tail is like chartreuse, like dipped almost. And it is... That's legit. Dude, the I way like that. that moves is so what brand is that? sick. Zoom. A Zoom? Zoom comes up in my top fives like way more than anybody else's probably. You get you you guys be sleeping on Zoom over here. You are. The Zoom fluke has been slept on for a generation. Zoom, dude, Zoom makes some good freaking classics. Dude. Um, and they're cheap. I mean, like you and they're free. Talk about Z Man. <laughs> The same bag of Z-Man, yes, it might last you six months, but like, and you only need 10. I'll get 35 Zoom worms. It'll still last me a month. <laughs> like, I've got bundles up there. I got flukes. I got like, I like their jig trailers. They got like the oh, little, yeah. they call it the chunk, the mm -hmm. chunk jig trailer. There's just big flappers and like a little block of plastic. So good. good stuff, man. They make They're good so stuff. Good. 
So that's my five. I do have some honorable mentions. The uh, the rabbit baits craw and darter on a drop shot with a tech. This, you're gonna see this, but like this to yeah. me is it'll be in the video. The, to me, it just screams finesse. Now mm-hmm. you do need to know how to rig it. You need to know how to fish it. If you're jerking it through the water in a wide you gap, lose. big old oh. hook, you're not gonna have a good day no. um, because you're not fishing it properly. It's just like no. anything else. Um, no. But they look so good. The uh, craw, the craw is on your honorable mention, right? Oh yeah, no, the, it's both the craw and the darter. I like them both. Um, yeah. Now Ned, Ned's um, Ned's Z Man's craw is also mm. there because they yeah. because of the elastic, they have this like really skinny attachment to like this big craw and like it's freaking sweet. Yeah, um, it's just so good and it lasts forever and it does what craws should do. It is, it is only essentially good for Ned rigging, though. I don't use it for anything else, but it is yeah. it can be a murderer. Um, shaky head, that that huge ribbon worm that we got from X Zone. Yep. That was yeah, nice. on a shaky. That I use a big old hook, and that you can flip the crap out of it. You can drag it. It's just yeah. awesome. They're um, uh the the finesse muscle back craw from them is pretty solid too. On a net. fish on one of those. Love the them. PB and J is PB and J is good. Yep. Then the last one, Jeff kind of touched on it. The my version of like one of his favorites, that Berkeley flatworm. Holy cow! Yeah, I don't know if it's like a leech or a worm. It's like a combo exactly, of the two, right? But dude, it the the flat bottom. So that's what makes the yeah. zoom trick worm a zoom trick worm. It has a flat bottom. It's not mm-hmm. fully circular like a stick bait. Yeah. And when that flat bottom is there, like that's what gives it the like. It's got yeah. so much more action. KVD KVD's little like Dream drop shot, shot trick worm. Oh my god, that and their color purple is dirty. And that's that's coffee scented too. So it's like it's got some mega scent and mega salt, so it's more buoyant. Man, those things are yeah. just they are that color purple they have is just amazing. Yeah. Um and yeah, the Berkeley flatworm, that's just a murderer. Yeah. Um if we do a live, if we do a live version, like leeches is gonna be on there, and that's because that's what they do. You get those jumbo yeah. leeches that are a couple inches long, and like that yeah. is what they do. Um, Somebody, I, I think it's Lunker Hunt. Lunker Hunt makes a leech for drop shot that has a mylar head that, oh. yeah, it's designed so you nose hook it through the mylar, yeah. but it's not going to rip, right? So it's it's designed to be like, it's not, it's not a last tech, but like the head of it is the problem. Like if you guys nose hook your drop shots, you know, if you get short struck or even if you get a good bite, like it's gone. It's torn. It's done. That plastic has one fish in it most times. The Mylar head, I didn't put it on my list, but I'll, I'll add that to the honorable mention. You guys should check it out. The Lunker Hunt leech with the Mylar head. Pretty legit. And I have a bag of it. It came in a Monster Bass box, I want to say, four or five months ago. And it's always in my bag. I mean, I got I to gotta just use it sometime. Let me get it out of the water. My last honorable mention is actually was going to be all of the – lunker hunt finesse stuff like oh the new series this yeah. is new right those yeah. the, you love the paddle tail ones those, love those, those little, little pet, they, oh my god they're like so basic they're super super basic and i'm they looking at them really i was like good they fit really good on a lot of like jigs i have a I lot do. of swim jigs they're so fantastic they're great as a spinner bait trailer like nose i nose hooked one of them i actually Started nose hooking it, kept getting short struck, had an octopus style hook. I, because it's a ribbon, like a ribbed body, I chopped a little bit of the front off and got to like the thickest part of the bait. And I hooked that into like the front and I essentially weedless hooked this octopus hook. Yeah. I, I could not keep fish off that thing. Dude, I, I bought, so in this series, they also have craw patterns and they have worms like Ned rig worms, but they're flat bodied as well flat bottom uh and rounded with like the meaty middle section and they have more action which is pretty cool they're not hyper durable i'll give no, them that like they're not very really but i bought the pre-rig they have pre-rig kits which are three plastics one is pre-rigged i bought the pre-rigged blue and green pumpkin craw and i caught a bowfin on it and it warped the hook that it came with yeah. the hook came out in like a figure eight shape and i was like what the hell yeah i i'm not i didn't buy any of the pre-rigs but i'll tell you like those plastics are good they look they're, good they're 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 fair value 
Yeah. And um, I don't love the packaging because it's that sandwich like two pieces of plastic. No, it looks good. But I, I like don't. Like, you like those? Yeah. I don't like those. I like it because they hold their shape. I love it. the new. Have you seen the new Kytec packaging? No. This is a whole new episode. We're not even going to get into this. But guys, real quick, Kytec changed your packaging. So if you're mad at Kytec packaging, like I was before, because it was just like a little tray in a plastic sleeve, mm-hmm. and the tray gets all warped and like it just sucks. The new ones are like vacuum formed clamshell, and it holds the tails in place. Dude, mm-hmm. so good. I like clamshell. Like, uh, who else does that good? Uh, Guggens. The Guggens do it good. That's for like Neds. And I feel like, I guess it depends on the bait. Yeah, it, I mean, it does. Here's what I hate about the clamshell. I'll just tell you why I don't like the clamshell. It takes up a lot when of space. You, I hate that. I hate yeah. that. Yep. Also, when you open it and everything moves slightly, even just a little bit, you can't you close to it. Reposition or you it. ruin it. And I don't like repackaging the bait every time I grab it. That's so, like, fair. That's I, fair. There's got to be a better way. I just don't love. I don't love those. Like, I just don't love those. Um, mm. It works. You're right. The the like the rattle and Ned comes in that. The uh, the rabbit baits come in those. Yep. Um, I'm sure that's a huge piece of why because they're they're just more fragile bait. But yeah, my lord. Like when you get like <laughs> like those. But I think the best examples is little paddle tails. The yeah. fin, the uh, ribbed paddle tails. It's a try re- this long. Try yeah. There's nine of them. Like try redoing that. Have fun. All right. Yeah. That was it. That was an episode, a guys. Giant Hope. big package. A monster. Um, but some good stuff, I think. Uh, and definitely, I think we hit the two that I think we probably know the best and fish quite a bit and have a lot of depth to them. So um, hopefully that was useful for you. Uh, if there's baits that we missed, let us know. If there's something that should have been in at least the honorable mentions, let us know. What is your top five? Let us know. If there's if there's anything you'd like to see in a series that we don't currently have on or may or may not have on for you, let us know what you want to see in the series. And uh, if we don't have it, we'll add it, period. Yeah, and we know these are longer episodes, but that's because we're talking about a, a, a an entire like area of baits. <laughs> Finesse top water so if you guys don't like the long episodes let us know we'll break it up into two or three episodes we could easily Mm -hmm. do that but uh yeah i think that's the point give us some feedback we appreciate it every five star review is a positive impact out in the ether that is the the internet right so if you want to help us succeed on the interwebs drop us a five star review drop us a comment let us know what you guys think about the show. Let us know what you want to talk, uh, want us to talk about next, and we'll definitely do that. Uh, but be sure to subscribe on the podcast, on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, check out the TikTok. Do all that cool stuff. We appreciate you guys. It's been a lot of fun. We hope you had a lot of fun as well, and we'll see you out on the water.